गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग डॉक्टर राजू कुड यू हियर मी डॉक्टर राजू डॉक्टर राजू यू आर ऑनलाइन आई हैव पीज नॉट देयर डॉक्टर गौतम एम आई ऑडिबल हां सर यू आर ऑडिबल सर Dr. Raju is not there, so it may be, but he is joined. Yes, sir. He is joined.
Hello, Haldar sir. Yes, yes. Could you hear me? Sir, yes, sir. Raju sir, I have some uh, net issue. He told you he will join within a couple of minutes. Okay. Now, what about the second speaker? Second speaker will join uh, within the three minutes. He also has same issue. Okay. Yes. So, first, first lecture will be for Dr. Raju or from our Baish sir? Uh, from Bail and Raju sir. First lecture is for. He may join in a couple of minutes. Sir. Okay. After that, we will start.
there's an option on mute, right, sir? Hello, sir. So, on the right side, there is a... Yeah, Gautam. Sir. Yes, sir. I am uh, very uh, apologized to everyone. Uh, there is a short delay in the webinar. Uh, due to the parent also, don't, uh, parent also don't have a net. I have issues and issues. So he will join within uh, three or four minutes. Okay. Sir, thank you. Yes, sir. So, good morning, sir. Byron Vaisha, sir. Hello. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Very good morning. Sorry for uh, delaying, uh, joining uh, a bit late. Uh, there was some yes, standard issue out here. Yes, sir. So, same issue with the Pilanda, sir. Can, you, uh, can we start with your presentation, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do that. Sir, I can uh, do that. Okay, so, uh, Dr. Surya Prakash, sir. Dr. Haldar, sir. Yes, I'm there. Sir, uh, shall we start with the uh, Byron, sir, now? Yes, yes. Without yes, delay, it is delayed. Yeah, yes, sir. Um, uh, I apologize to everyone for delaying the webinar due to some technical issues. Uh, today, we will start our uh, webinar with the uh, second session. Um, good morning, all. I am your coordinator, Gautam Krishna Sajja, junior consultant, GIS and Divorce. Welcome you all to the webinar on satellite remote sensing for understanding the national hazard mitigation strategies. 
first of all i could like to convey my sincere thanks to shri taj asin ips ed in idm and uh, professor surya prasad head jmr division and cbrn industrial and cyber drr division national D national institute of disaster management institute of home affairs government of india for giving permission to conduct this webinar and my special thanks to distinguished speakers and panelists for accepting and joining us today before moving to the inaugural address let me set the content context of the webinar national hazards are extreme events within the earth systems that result in death of injury to humans and damages or loss of valuable goods such as buildings communication systems agricultural land forest natural environment etc the economic losses due to natural disasters have some an increasing with factor of eight over the past four decades caused by the increased vulnerability of the global society but also due to an increasing the number of weather related disasters for the efficient manage of natural hazards a large amount of multi temporal spatial data is required satellite remote sensing is an ideal tool for disaster management since it offers information over large areas and at short time intervals although it can be utilized in the various spaces of disaster management such as prevention preparedness relief and reconstruction in practice up till now it is a shortly more mostly used for warning and monitoring During the last decades, remote sensing has become an operation tool in disaster preparedness and warning phases for signals, droughts, and floods or various disasters. The use of remote sensing data is not possible without a proper tool to handle a large amount of data and combine it with the data coming from other sources, such as maps or measurement stations. Therefore, together with the growth of the remote sensing application, GIS have become increasingly important for disaster management. For an example, address we have a joint. with the dr haldar sir consultant fmc nidm he is the former director of rsac <laughs> So for now's address, we have joined with Dr. Haldar Shah, student consultant from Senadium. He is a former director at RSAC Lucknow and having a vast experience on remote sensing and GIS. Sir, welcome. And now the floor is yours. Sir. Okay, thank you, thank you, Dr. Gautam. So thank you. It is a great opportunity to <coughs> to uh, read the keynote address on this. Before to that, am I audible, Dr. Gautam? Sir, yes, sir, you are audible, sir. so first i <clears throat> the learned speaker dr raju who is my friend he is with us and uh, <clears throat> dr biran vaishya gis expert from uh, that assam disaster management and professor surya prakash sab our head gmrd and other panelists and also i welcome the distinguished participants today's webinar you have learned already that is a satellite remote sensing for understanding the natural hazards and mitigation strategies so you know already dr gautam he told about the remote sensing and gis few lines now you know the satellite remote sensing coupled with gis techniques how much it has given for different kinds of natural hazards and disaster at uh, since last few decades the uh, in any kind of disaster without this remote sensing and gis what i feel it will be very difficult to manage in short time and in precise manner the aerial remote sensing data are useful for the natural hazard management for focusing in the priority areas verifying small scale data interpretations and providing information about features that are too small to detection by satellite imagery that aerial remote sensing can give a better insight for that and uh, <clears throat> that you know that uh, in recent uh, that uh, earth scientists they will be using the fractals to measure and predict natural disasters by predicting size location and timings of natural hazards is virtually impossible but now the earth scientists are able to forecast the hurricane floods cyclone earthquakes also wild fires landslide using these factors in recent year the natural hazards many of those in geologic origin became an issue of increasing 
public awareness. There are a number of reasons in governing these development, rap rapid disseminations of news, intensive media coverage, larger population moving into potential risk areas, loss of financial uh, investment due to natural catast uh, catastrophes, unsuitable land use and land management. Also, on the other hand, a rapid development in the information technology sector, especially in earth observation. Earth observation satellite and remote sensing aircraft are the platform which are used to install sophisticated equipment designed to scan the earth numerous wavelength of the electromagnetic spectrum. Modern remote sensing technology provides excellent opportunity to observe geodynamic processes. However, the sensors and platforms to be utilized to have the adequate to the problem addressed. In many cases, where fast processes are involved, a high repetition rate is essential in monitoring the event. The data acquired is mainly in digital format, multispectral scanners, MSS with bands numbering from 3 to 222 to 0, covering the visible to short wave range of the electromagnetic spectrum, are the most common instrument in space and on aircraft. The trend to improve the spatial regulation will continue and add unprecedented image data, which can combine with selected MSS band will build a powerful source of information. The radar satellites with their all weather capabilities add to the spectrum of satellites, radar data together, radar, these radar data together with the precise ranging of satellite will add measured quantities to Earth observation. For the first time, we are in position to generate an exact topographical model of the Earth's surface. Altitude can thus be compared from continent to continent. Future missions will deliver data for higher vertical resolution and will be of more precise cartographic quality. And many more has to come. The remote sensing technology not only remote sensing, the geospatial technology is having vast capability to cater the problem in natural hazards and even these all kinds of disasters. So with this, I'll put my end that the learned speaker, Dr. P. L. N. Raju is there and GIS expert, that Mr. Biran Vaishra is there. So they, they will give a details for that. Now, thank you very much for giving the opportunity. Now, what to you, Dr. Gautam, please. Sir, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for, uh, for joining with us. Fortunately, the Dr. PLN Rajasar has joined us, and he will continue to the first session as per schedule. Uh, before starting the session, I'd like to inform to participant that we have a chat box to source your questions. Feel free, free to drop questions on the topic. We will answer your questions by the end of the each guest sessions. So without future ado, let me introduce you our first speaker. Sri PLN Raju sir, served 33 years in ISRO, nearly three decades in the Department of Space Government of India during 1988 to 2021. He served as a director, Northeastern Space Application Center for five years. Uh, he also served at Indian Institute of Remote Sensing ISRO, the for 28 years. He has specialized in remote sensing technology, application with emphasizing in water resource, geoinformatic technology and applications and genesis, etc. Dr. Kiran Rajasar is presently appointed as a Special Secretary, Science, Technology and Climate Change Department and Director, Assam State Space Application Center, Government of Assam for two years since September. Sir, now the platform is yours. Yeah, thank you, Gautam, and uh, thanks to uh, Lutz, sir. I think. Uh, um, I am not audible. Sir, sir, Raju, it is giving some problem. Your voice is getting cut. Uh, please confirm, uh, Gautam, I am audible. Sir, 
sir uh, you are audible sir you have, uh, you have some issues with your voice uh now uh, is it okay ah uh, sir now it is okay sir is it is it breaking or it is coming it's coming sir now it is improved dr raju yeah uh, coming what about uh, uh, i can start uh, share uh, share content this uh, uh, my screen is visible no sir sir please share your screen sir is it coming yeah is my screen is coming yes sir your screen is coming. yes dr yeah, thank you uh, uh, gautam uh, and thanks to nidm for giving me an opportunity and uh, whenever there is any problem or anything please inform me if uh, any related to audio or video etc so then i'll i'll try to change up to another network and try to continue uh, so uh, this is uh, i am going to talk on uh, the technologies how the technologies are going to play a very important role uh, in natural hazards or whatever you call disaster management the, they can be natural or man made but in all cases uh, the technologies are uh, going to play very important role so any question in between also if somebody have they can also ask me there is no issue so uh, i think you all participant are uh, well aware i think uh, that if we talk about a natural hazards uh, there are many natural hazards and uh, they also uh happen at different places uh, according to the uh, this one uh, situation suppose uh, according to the uh, location also suppose if you talk about cyclones so it it, it it happens mainly in the coastal areas and then if you talk about the floods it is mainly uh, flood plain areas like a brahmaputra or in bihar koshi river or in uh, south uh, 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 this one godavari so there are many places uh, they are specific to the location uh, those, those uh, type of events and then if you talk about uh, forest fires so northeast uh, we have almost 65% or above is uh, uh, forested areas and every year uh, thousands of lakhs of forest fires occur in northeast because of the uh, we have a high density of forest uh, in whole northeast and the landslides also specific to that uh, areas hill areas and earthquakes is uh, highly earth prone uh, prone areas like uh, zone 5 and 4 uh, and 5 etc so and then tsunami also related to the uh, sea and coastal areas so lightning also there are specific locations where the lightning is more uh, very high and then there are many many other uh, uh, natural hazards thunderstorms etc so you you can see overall uh, these things uh, the space technology plays very important role so one is uh, we always say that uh, we are proud of uh, indian space research organization uh, in one sense that uh, we are self uh, sufficient uh, in uh, all the technologies for putting the satellite into the orbit and then also making those satellites and also using them for different applications so our uh, indian space research organization is known for uh, uh, societal applications so this uh, disasters and uh, natural hazards is one of the components of uh, this societal applications and very important component uh, the disasters if you talk about the disasters and then there are many uh, satellites we launch our own satellites and they also uh, we use the data and then many uh, for various applications and then we also have a very high resolution data 
to uh, uh, very uh, coarse resolution data and you talk about uh, geostationary satellite where we, our uh, spatial resolution is like uh, 2 kilometers or 8 kilometers when you talk about the sun synchronous satellites so the resolution come down to uh, very high uh, resolution so uh, that uh, uh, we go up to 25 centimeters if you talk about a cartosat uh, uh, 3 series uh, recently launched and then meteorological satellites they are there in the geostationary particularly used for the uh, cyclones and uh, all uh, prediction of uh, uh, what our monsoon and then uh, cyclone tracking all these applications we use uh, and then also we use uh, different models uh, based on the this meteorological observed data and also predict what will be the rainfall in the next 24 hours, 36 hours or uh, one week time and then same data can be utilized for also flood modeling and then early warning of the flooding etc. And then if you see that uh, these technologies, we say there are uh, uh, these technologies based on the orbital orientation of the satellite as I mentioned geostationary satellite which are there at 36,000 kilometers above the air and they are stationed uh, uh, against any country or region and then they are always looking at, at the same location. So if you have three such type of satellites placed around the earth, so they can cover the whole earth. Uh, similarly, when you talk about remote sensing, they are mostly placed uh, in sun synchronous orbit and then we say sun synchronous because uh, their uh, their angle of orientation and then uh, orbit uh, orbital coverage is such that uh, the satellite comes to the local uh, place at the same time. So this coming to same time it also having its own advantages, same elimination conditions so that when you when you try to assess the ground condition either it is agriculture crops or housing or water bodies or forest or snow areas. So same illumination condition will help you to identify the objects and also use for different assessment purposes. Another is microwave remote sensing. So when we all started uh, uh, remote sensing that time we used to have a limited microwave uh, satellites but now we have a large uh, think of uh, these satellites are mainly micro remote sensing also. So the main purpose of uh, this micro remote sensing is all time all weather coverage because they also penetrate through the clouds. So that is the main advantage of using a micro satellites. And the LIDAR basically they are more on an aerial platform and the UAV drone platform. So these uh, LIDARs basically will give the point information and that will also help you to find out the precise uh, height of the location of those points so that you can generate a, uh, DEM, DSM, DTM, etc. Those are all very much useful for uh, uh, flood inundation studies and flood simulation studies, etc. And uh, now nowadays EAVs have come in a big way. So particularly they are a boom for all these disaster management activities earlier uh, any disaster happens. So we used to struggle uh, to carry the material from place to place and then sometimes the connectivity is not there. And in case of Brahmaputra and then uh, devastating of the floods, uh, nobody can reach to the places, but the EAV can help you to reach those places and to rescue the people and also supply the relief, etc. So this, this is a a uh, big help uh, in the sense of uh, the technological advancements and also we can carry the materials and deliver or also bring back the people. Nowadays people are talking about EAVs who, uh, which can also carry human beings from place to place. So they are like a bigger uh, EAVs etc. And then GPS and GNSS, uh, Global Positioning System and Global Navigation Satellite System, they play a very important role. Uh, in case of any disasters, suppose somebody is struck up somewhere and then uh, he wanted to come out of that uh, disaster and to save his life. So anybody can uh, wanted to go there. So once we know the location of those people, person, he's sharing the location, 
so automatically the authorities are responding uh, disaster management response team can quickly go to that place so the location is a central uh, uh, point for all these uh, applications so we require to have a location so the precise location nowadays we can get from this gps gnss location uh, gnss systems and another important thing is the internet the availability of the internet and also this internet also plays very very important role in the sense when uh, the disaster happens and then we wanted uh, uh, to know that what is exact condition on the ground so then then uh, we can use web portals and then also ask the people uh, crowdsource uh, the information in case of haiti uh, earthquake disaster are you talking about a uh, uh, Nepal disaster, earthquake which has happened, or any cyclone. Uh, one is Hood Hood cyclone which has happened in uh, Visakhapatnam, uh, Andhra Pradesh. So that time uh, mobile apps have been developed and ask the people to directly send their own information, either in terms of the total damage or in terms of uh, rescue operations required or any support services they wanted. So it can be done instantly using a crowdsourcing and then authorities can quickly respond to that. So this internet and satellite communication really help in that. Wherever that uh, internet connection is lost because of the all ground infrastructure is damaged. So then satellite co communication come into pictures. So we can uh, temporarily reinstall, reinstate the satellite communication back and so that people started uh, start using this technology for communication and safety transfer and relief or whatever you say all those things are uh, possible uh, i just wanted to highlight because uh, i wanted to highlight more on a technology rather than uh, uh, natural hazards because uh, there are maybe other experts will be talking in about other uh, this one natural hazards and how to uh, uh, how to uh, take action related to that? So they, uh, but I wanted to concentrate on the more on the latest development which are there, so so that they'll really help in uh, natural hazards and disaster management. Uh, when you talk about the satellites in India, we have around 16, 17 our own satellites, uh, all are on uh, sun synchronous orbit. But uh, in the recent past. There are many commercial satellites are launched. So one is uh, uh, Planet Scope. They launched more than 200 satellites, and also Rapid Eye. So there are total 791. So just, I just wanted to highlight again, 791 is a very very huge number. So that uh, they cover the all the earth because when the disaster happens, we don't know where it is going to happen unless the satellite coverage is more. So that is also possible when you have a large number of satellites. So 799 is very good number. So and then those things will really help to get the data in near real time. So that is the main advantage of this. So maybe they are uh, uh, belongs to the different countries, a different commercial setup, etc. But whenever the disaster happens, so those data, they, those people. Uh, start uh, mobilizing their resources and then putting to use so they can provide the data. So uh, the, it is many applications that we can use this thing. And then there are uh, constellation of the satellite like a planet scope, and then they operate in in the in the uh, panchromatic mode and multispectral mode, and then their their height is also. Uh, 450 to 580 kilometer altitude, and they are very small cubesats, 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter by 30 centimeters. So their weight is approximately 100 kgs. Whereas in case of normal remote sensing satellites, when you talk about the quarter sat or resource sat or IRS satellite, so they are around 1,000 kilos. So these are almost uh, one tenth of that. Uh, what is the normal satellite? Maybe the lifetime of these satellites are less, but uh, but at the same time. So their number is more, so that the coverage uh, uh, across the world will be very high. So that means if you wanted something, so we can quickly get it. Maybe every day, not even one uh, coverage, there are many coverages 
for all the area we can get from these satellites. And then there are very high resolution skysat. These are all the commercial satellites. So there are around 15 satellites are already launched. And then there is a uh, getting the resolution of uh, panchromatic black and white that is 0.5 meter and multispectral is a less than a meter. So uh, four to five days each satellite. So because we have a large number of satellites, so that means we can get uh, six times minimum uh, uh, six times in a day or 12, 12 times uh, maximum. So uh, the special feature is uh, capturing video. That is one important thing. So basically when if there is a forest fire is happening and in that case you wanted to quickly capture or man-made disaster is happening or something uh, flash flood is happening in a particular place so all those things we can capture this how do you capture the so satellites are also they are in agile in nature so that they can be filtered to the area of interest and then capture that information so there is a rapid eye which is uh, slow, uh, little uh, uh, lower the resolution than the sky satellite, but uh, the coverage is large. So we talk about uh, uh, 630, uh, this is a kilometer orbit, but uh, you can also have a coverage of the swath of the coverage of the data is also more uh, in case of the rapid eye when it's compared to this. Another, uh, we wanted to put a satellites into the orbit, uh, first, first of its kind, but uh, GISAT, which was uh, launched on August 12th uh, in 2021, but unfortunately it cannot be put into the orbit and this is a geostationary 36,000 kilometer height and then having a, so many spectral bands, they are operating in a hyperspectral and uh, it is the main advantage is there it, it gives, gives the picture at every, every uh, half an hour so that uh, any any disaster related thing it is all the time dependent and time dynamics what is happening in a few hours in case of the flash floods and then and then also uh, few few days in case of the flooding of the larger areas so this satellite is going to help but presently it is not uh, uh, operationally available as soon as it is launched again, so hopefully it is going to help in a large extent of all the disasters because the coverage is uh, very high. So that uh, uh, that is advantage of RISAN. And then I just wanted to highlight that when you compare uh, optical remote sensing, particularly you talk about uh, uh, floods, etc. Most of the time the area is uh, cloudy in nature, and then in particularly during the monsoon season. So we hardly get the, any data uh, using uh, normal optical remote sensing. So the only alternative will be available will be microwave satellites. So these microwave satellites, they are also uh, very, very uh, large and bigger in size when you compare to the optical remote sensing. Uh, you say that uh, Invisat is the heaviest satellites uh, microwave. It was launched sometime back and then you see the size of that and then the weight of it and when you come to that ISAT and Kapula constellation so we are going up to 40 kilograms so so 40 means almost uh, uh, so 200 times lesser than uh, 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 lesser in the size than the NVSAT so very small in the size it is Yes. Hey, may I meeting me on Bad Marin Korea? And then these satellites are very small in nature, but advantage is they have a group of the satellites, so that's why they call it a constellation. Uh, when you say ISI, so there's already uh, around 20 uh, satellites are launched out of 30 and Kapila also having a large number of satellites. The advantage is these satellites cover an almost every day basis. So any changes are happening on a daily basis and penetrating the clouds, uh, they are the, the best 
uh, for the uh, disaster or uh, uh, flood or any any disaster related activities to to help in the near real time okay, if you see this so you can have a resolution of isi sat uh, satellite constellation 0.25 means 25 centimeters in the spot and pre meter resolution in strip and 15 meter resolution in the scanning mode conditions and then there are uh, 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 16 uh, uh, expand the SAR satellites as of today and plan to expand it to 18. So, so that covering the whole earth, so that on a daily or an, as frequently as possible, these satellites are available for different applications. So, you see this ISA is the first to achieve daily coherent ground track. So, this will help you to find out the, any changes on the ground, whether it is a land subsidence or, uh, or due to uh, land subsidence due to even uh, groundwater, etc. How the land is going down. So that you can do using the these coherent uh, uh, images. So all the changes which is there, it is there like uh, uh, 16, uh, 16, 17. It is starting and going up to 28. So what are the changes which are happening uh, over the short span? You can also see in this. So there is one more uh, example is. Even in two days time, what are the changes that have taken place? So it is something like uh, uh, one is a no change, then it is a white, and then there is change happening, they shown in a black color. So it will really uh, help uh, in changes and also finding a height information, etc. in this. So like, as I mentioned here, uh, uh, ISI uh, satellite, so then we have a couple of space. So both are commercial in nature. So this is a micro satellite. They have they have a plan of 36 number. Uh, each one will operate at an altitude of 500. So then revisit time is the 90 uh, 90 minutes. It's a three hours uh, revisit capability of three to six hours. All over sub 50 kg satellites having a life of three years. Now, 12 satellites were launched so far. If you see that, Henrysat is the biggest satellite, which is having a uh, 5 meter height and then uh, width is uh, 2.5 meters. So, and then if you talk about a Kapila uh, in space, so this microwave satellite is very small. It's a cubical satellite, but when it is expanded with antenna, so it basically uh, covering the larger area, 5 meter width, etc. So, similar to that uh, microwave and optical remote sensing, then EAV remote sensing also uh, playing very important role in various applications, providing high resolution product when you capture the data. And then it is also coverage uh, according to your requirement, uh, it can go to that area and now uh, get get the required data. Uh, what I wanted to uh, highlight is uh, even you go for a commercial satellite. So what happens is uh, when you wanted a small area, but their policy is we have to buy uh, at least full seed. So that means your requirement is maybe two square kilometers or one square kilometer. But if you use high resolution uh, commercial satellites, so we have to buy minimum 100 uh, uh, square kilometers. So these are the things, uh, though we wanted to use a small part, but you have to pay for the whole part. So that is the disadvantage of uh, in case of uh, high resolution satellite data, but in case of EAV, we can go to the area and cover that area even better than that um, uh, normal high resolution commercial satellites. And it can be also done as quickly as possible. And these EAVs are, can be also used for surveillance, basically security surveillance purposes, and delivery of emergency product, medicine, etc. And uh, local area internet services. So if there is no internet, so this can be connected as a uh, 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 internet with a Wi-Fi uh, spot, so that uh, it can help the local local people. In the, in the sense, uh, common service centers or uh, villages where this uh, 
uh, Wi-Fi or internet is not there. So this can be also establishing is EAV. Another thing is also we can also connect it using the satellite communication. What we are doing, uh, GSAT 29, which is based in Norway. So using that establishing a small antenna, we can bring in that internet services using the satellites. So I'll come back to that on a satellite based internet services. And then uh, it can also be used for transportation application. So as I mentioned earlier, the web portals, so using that uh, crowdsourcing, so that means whatever the web portal is there. Uh, so there we can develop a mobile app and give it to the people so that they go to the ground and collect the information. So as a crowdsourcing and then that information is used uh, for disaster uh, uh, preparedness, response and uh, after disaster effects, we can quickly do it. So uh, basically a GIS is uh, overall, uh, you may be aware that it is an integrating tool and then combining the spatial and non-spatial information. And also uh, it can be used for the preparedness to the uh, disaster. Suppose uh, you know that many areas which are in low lying, so there are houses also there. And in case of any small uh, flood event happens, so these low lying areas are getting inundated. But uh, if you have already the database is prepared for the whole uh, city or town. So then if you overlay this LIDAR data, or DEM data, or height information data, so automatically it will also help you that knowing the spread area, knowing the volume of the water, it occupies in that. So that uh, assessment of damage assessment and impact of the flood, etc., all those things we can do uh, in, a, in a GIS environment. Uh, I just wanted to highlight because earlier also I mentioned uh, global navigation satellite system. So in that our uh, uh, our own NAVIC also comes into that, and but the coverage is only for the Indian. Uh, but uh, GPS, you say, and then you have uh, Russia, GLONASS, and then there are many other the systems are there. So one more important thing is when you start using this. Uh, GNSS GPS systems, so they will come out with a certain accuracy. If you wanted to improve the accuracy, we have to do a satellite based augmentation system. So you have to develop a satellite based augmentation system, uh, and then that will really help in improving the positional information. Airport of Authority of India and Indian Space Risk Organization signed an MOU and uh, established uh, satellite-based augmentation systems. So what we uh, call it as uh, NAVIC or IRNSS systems. And then once we put it, uh, there is also called uh, uh, Gagan. So this uh, system is basically taking the position from GPS and uh, on the ground, we also establish the network. And then, uh, I don't know how if you are aware or not, Survey of India is trying to establish this force that continuously operating uh, reference stations. Uh, this uh, force is something like uh, you put your uh, GPS at what one particular place and try to observe uh, the readings and also improve the accuracy of those points. And once you this course network is established and then from base station is established, so then uh, you, can, you can also extend the surveying of other areas so that your accuracy uh, improves. Particularly, if you talk about the air, aircraft landing and taking off, particularly during winter time, and that is that too, uh, fog, etc. will not be exactly knowing your own position and uh, um, not having a visible proper conditions. So this will uh, uh, help in that uh, uh, case. And then uh, basically what I'm trying to say is 
once you have a dgps so that uh, helps getting the highest accuracy but uh, you, you try to see that if you want to have a dgps it is a huge investment we talk about 10 15 lakhs to 30 lakhs you require to have a, a set of uh, uh, dgps so once this type of the gagan uh, satellite diagnosis system is established and survey of india is, is planning to put almost more than 900 these four stations across india and then including uh, 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 northeast also and then assam also so then once it is established so then it will, it will uh, as a, as an individual we can directly use those services without having any dgps uh, equipment to install. So that means government is going trying to set up uh, these systems, force network, and then as a common man, we should we should be able to get highest accurate positional information on the ground. So that way, uh, this course will help in improving the accuracy, etc. So uh, the important thing is you have a in communication area, I mentioned that we started internet in around 1995 at uh, 9.6 uh, kilobytes per second. But uh, by 2004, the broadband policy uh, uh, of uh, 256 kbps, 2010 government auctioned the 3G and followed by 4G, accelerated wireless uh, uh, broadband network. So, as of now, we have uh, 450 internet users in India and second to only the China of 900 million users and the 72% are below 35 years. So, uh, these internet basically playing very important role for various applications including disaster management. So, we have a high throughput satellites uh, launched by ISRO like a GSAT 29. So, it is directly we can put a D2H based internet services. So there are uh, more than 50,000 villages which can be connected because there are villages that are far, uh, far off places, not well connected. So these so GSAT satellites directly you can beam it to the places. It is already beaming to the, all the areas. So, but uh, this GSAT 29 is exclusively beaming uh, northeast as well as. Uh, Jammu and Kashmir. So that uh, the internet connectivity and bandwidth, uh, satellite communication bandwidth, it can be expanded for all these uh, places. So that uh, disaster uh, supporting activities, we can take it up. Or it will really help in that. And one more uh, thing is, I just wanted to highlight is the latest developments what are taking place. The people also wanted to provide like a GSAT 29, what we have stated above, uh, other like a, a SpaceX, Cooper, Amazon, and one web satellite internet connection without terrestrial support. That means directly from the space. So uh, I, I can say other way, suppose when he, when he wanted a location on the ground, earlier uh, Survey of India is the only authority to provide the location on the ground using the lot of equipment and then once they establish and uh, provide the location information after doing a total station and uh, 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 all ground based uh, surveying etc but now because of this uh, gps we don't require any ground network we can directly get your own uh, position uh, x y and z uh, coordinates uh, that to using a gps a gnss system so similarly the starlink also wanted to have provide the internet facility directly from the uh, satellites so they have 2100 already launched and to go uh, go up to 12000 satellites to plus 3000 12000 satellites they already got approval 30000 uh, satellites they are in the future plan so taking our permission they will be able to take one web is uh, launched around 428 to 500, 648. So this is also uh, one more uh, revolutionary change. 
i hope in the coming days this availability of the internet is brings so many more newer applications we might not have thought now but certainly these things are going to help in the last few minutes man so uh, the social media like crowdsourcing as i mentioned earlier and then the different portals we can directly use and then whatever is uh, uh, he wanted to do crowdsourcing and get instant information related to forest fire related to floods anything you wanted to think so this social media is uh, really helps as i mentioned uh, it also one example where they used social media for uh, uh, getting communicated as well as getting back the information etc so that you can take a, uh, a preventive or uh, uh, stopping those uh, uh, minimizing those disasters to uh, extent possible so this is uh, basically uh, flood scenario uh, between nimati ghat to tejpur if you see that over the over the days uh, over the this discharge level increases so then it is going to expand and flooding the area and also uh, we also use what is what is the water depth etc so this information also uh, help in uh, simulation of the floods so see see only one point you have to remember is uh, the preparedness and then response and early warning so these are different different, different things in case of a preparedness so that means in the in the this is the area what we are going to uh, get the floods etc so then that type of simulation studies we can also take it up and how much area it is going to inundate it. so that means in a preparedness we will be also knowing that how much area it is going to be inundated if the uh, the discharge is increased in the upper stream another thing is uh, what are all the underlying uh, themes layers we have it can be a, a land use, uh, land cover, or particularly you talked about the crops. In case of Brahmaputra, the crops is the main thing uh, along the Brahmaputra uh, river stream. So if you wanted to assess the damage, or how much is going to damage because of the this flood uh, simulation scenario, so then it will really help the authorities to take the re uh, relief measures. So similarly, we also have uh, the houses, how many houses are damaged, how many houses are under the flood. So all those things it really helps in uh, these simulation studies. Like all disasters, flood also we have a preparedness. So that means you make the all prepared measures like preparing the flood hazard uh, map or you talk about uh, uh, housing different type of houses how many number of houses digitization of those things and keeping so that whenever that uh, population in each town etc so that will really help in uh, taking the uh, actions and responding to these type of disasters one more uh, highlight i wanted to make is early warning so early warning of what? Early warning of, uh, you talked about uh, floods or you talked about uh, forest fires or the landslides. So if we can provide this early warning, so then people are getting aware and also uh, they, they, they shift to the other areas where the disaster is not there. Uh, these type of things really helps in the sense if you talk about the actual event and the evacuating, that is a really disaster. And in case of <coughs> uh, early warning and prediction, so basically it will help you to know that which are the areas it is going to be inundated. So the people can be warned to uh, move in advance. So another thing is uh, uh, is basically. Uh, concerned with authorities where uh, the people has to take uh, uh, responsive actions. Any any uh, questions uh, quickly, uh, Gautam? Sir, 
you want i'll just say two three minutes and then we can start again so there's no questions still now so uh, i can stop and then see yeah, if somebody can respond okay sir sure sir i'll just stop for three three four minutes yeah okay sir and then uh, they can share their questions in the meantime chat box okay. uh, directly also they can ask okay sir Dear participants, I'd like to request you to put your questions in the chat box. Sir, uh, there is no questions from the participants. Ah, uh, sir, we have one question. Yes. Sir, we have one question from uh, Anand Kumar Gupta. Yeah, I'll go to that. Yes. Is there in chat, uh, chat box? Yes, sir, it's in chat box. <laughs> But I'm not getting that question. Sir, from where uh, from where one can acquire landslide inventory data containing information such as a value and damage status, damage status, I think. Okay. Can you can you speak again? From where one can acquire landslide inventory data containing information such as a value and uh, damage statuses. Uh, one is uh, uh, Geological Survey of India, they prepare these landslide maps. Another is uh, uh, National Remote Sensing Center, Hyderabad, under Indian Space Risk Organization. They generate this landslide inventory map for uh, different uh, states and different hill areas. And those things are also put as part of uh, their own portals, uh, Bowen portal, so that the data can be uh, taken. So uh, this is done based on the using the satellite uh, data. So one is uh, you talk about a landslide inventory. And then uh, I just wanted to link that further. If you wanted to prepare a landslide hazard donation map, uh, it will something like a um, uh, frequent uh, occurrence of the landslides. Suppose the more frequent uh, the landslide happens in a particular area. We can say this is the highest landslide prone areas and then which which happens uh, multiple times in a particular area. And some of the areas it may happen one once in a while. So that is a low uh, uh, landslide hazard donation map. It is similar like uh, flood hazard donation map. Suppose if you take a 15, 20 years, the flood is happening uh, in a particular area or uh, state or district. So based on that uh, uh, frequency of occurrence, we normally prepare a 
uh, hazard donation maps. So those hazard donation maps uh, really helps in any further planning. Suppose I wanted to go for a highway route alignment between two places. Uh, that uh, it has been done for uh, in Arunachal Pradesh uh, at Anisak. So those areas were avoided because even you construct the road and the more uh, 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 landslide prone areas. So then basically the clearing of that, uh, it takes a lot of time to do. Uh, I have traveled from uh, uh, Itanagar to Jiro Valley. So on the way, we have seen so many landslides happened in the past, but that is not clear because the huge landmass uh, coming up from the up to down and then it is uh, damaging or uh, obstructing the road. So that means avoiding those things and doing it is really helpful. So that way hazard donation maps also will be uh, really helpful. Uh, shall I proceed uh, further? Sir, uh, we have uh, one more question, uh, sir. Uh, sir, it is uh, possible to download landslide inventory year wise from any source. If so, what is the source? Same question. Yeah, that uh, uh, I think uh, if somebody goes to the Bowen portal and then try to see, they can download those images. So, so with this, we can continue our session, sir. So, uh, what I wanted to highlight is uh, uh, because uh, I'm there in the Northeast and mostly. Uh, this Brahmaputra basin, so we uh, we get a lot of uh, flooding happens in uh, more frequently. So one of the requirement from the Assam State Disaster Management Authority is if we can give early warning that uh, the uh, flood is going to happen in a particular area in Assam. So that is what they wanted uh, uh, NESAC to do that. So for that uh, we we use we develop. Uh, the model, one is a WRF model uh, for whole Northeast and then prepare a, uh, uh, the precipitation map uh, based on the satellite data. That means based on the cloud information, humidity, temperature and then uh, wind and then what is the circulation pattern. So then what is the land use, land cover, all this information uh, 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 we use a WRF model. And then using that, you generate a, a, a precipitation, expected precipitation in the next 24 hours or 36 hours. So that information, again, you fed into HEC HMS hydrological model and also predict that uh, uh, what is the uh, runoff and then what is the discharge it is going to carry. And then also uh, in the downstream to the, uh, the river channel. And then the, because of that, how much is uh, it is also increasing the level of the water and also causing a flood in the downstream. So these uh, uh, studies have been carried out and then it is done on a regular basis. And then every year uh, this uh, forecast or alert is given to Assam Disaster Management Authority so that, that they use uh, that information, alert the people on the ground water resources people and the local people. So they can basically uh, uh, shift it from the low lying areas or provide the relief measures which is required for the people at revenue at revenue circle level. So this is done for the last, I can say, uh, more than 10 years. It is done on operational basis. And then also we get an accuracy of 75 to 80% accuracy in that. The most important thing is, uh, so far we are talking about uh, various uh, natural uh, hazards and disasters. Uh, recently, uh, Honorable Home Minister visited the Northeast uh, and also he presided over the NESAC Society meeting and specifically mentioned that, see, this area is prone to the floods. It, it is, uh, we cannot avoid that thing. But only the, the point was raised is, can we minimize this flooding? What are the measures to be taken for that? So then uh, NESAC along with uh, Assam State Disaster Management Authority or Assam Space Application uh, Center and Water Resources Department of Assam taken an initiation 
to map the wetland areas, can these flooding waters, uh, instead of directly uh, leaving to the downstream and then causing the floods, can these water can be diverted to the wetlands and also develop these wetlands? Uh, one purpose is to take the flood cushion or reduce the flood cushion and divert the water to the wetlands and uh, so that in the downstream flood impact can be reduced. So that way the uh, it is not only uh, satellite data what we are using mainly for uh, finding out our preparedness or response and whatever the damage it's happened. So it is in other way to look at it, look at the, uh, and the situation and how to divert the water and so that flood uh, intensity can be reduced on the downstream. So these uh, what is that? For that, we use the flood hazard donation layers, and then we also wanted to see that wetlands uh, areas more than 10 hectares in size to consider, and then that is also take the uh, located these wetlands within uh, 3.5 kilometer buffer from the flood prone rivers. So that means. All also avoid this agriculture come residential, residential infrastructure, railways, etc. And also, uh, and then estimate the wetland capacity using the high resolution DEM and diversion route and river flow analysis. So, these are all things that have been done and identified which are the areas they can be diverted the water. So, initially mapping the wetlands, there are uh, 2,221. These are all only within the buffer zone of 3.5 kilometers, both the sides of the Brahmaputra. And also uh, taking only total number of wetlands, 271, because we decided that uh, more than 10 hectares and above, so that uh, both the sides of the river. So these are the wetlands were considered. And then so distribution of these are the wetlands. So uh, this is a district wise number of wetlands what is there and then suppose uh, once you identify these wetlands and then using the height information you can also find out what is the capacity of these uh, wetlands and then suppose if you increase the wetland area, uh, expand this wetland area or create an embankment type of thing or regeneration excavating the wetlands and creating the more depth into that sir, so that uh, yeah sir we have a couple of minutes left sir for the session hello how much couple of minutes sir. two minutes are there all oh, right, right. i am just about to finish here yeah. okay sir. so the total capacity once you reason away so that it is increased almost uh, more than a double so that way also it will help in uh, reducing the flood impact in the downstream so once we identify the wetland areas and also divert that flood, so what is happening is we are also finding out the gradients to divert that water uh, to the nearby wetlands. And once we take that existing capacity is here 59 million cubic meters and also it can be increased to, to uh, 123 million cubic meters once you do reservate. And then the root length is 252 2 kilometer length. And then flood peak also, instead of happening in four days, it is happening after five days. So that means uh, the flood impact can be reduced to some extent if you use this. So this is also similar for the Golagat area. And then you see flood peak is also reduced and shifting the peak also is happened and then it is 31 million cubic meters to 64 million cubic kilometer. So all this water once we divert, so this water will not go to the uh, uh, main channel. So this is also done for the similarly one specific district and earlier I was mentioning flood hazard donation map of Demaji is here. So it says that uh, it has taken 1995 to 2000 and uh, 18, around 20 years data is taken and then highest uh, 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 this one flood hazard, severe, uh, very high flood hazard uh, map is red color. It is 16 times the flood happened in so that many years and uh, 13 to 15 times the other areas. Green is 1 to 4 times. So that way this flood hazard donation map is prepared.
these are also similar i don't want see another important thing is uh, another uh, if you wanted to reduce impact flood in the downstream we can also construct a check dams so that in the upstream so the total capacity if you say that total number of check dams particularly in demaji district if you talk about identified 47 numbers and then this capacity what we are telling is capacity of storage of water can be increased 8 million you know, cubic meter that means downstream that much impact can be reduced at the same time if you plan better land use planning like afforestation bench terrace and broad based terrace contour and grading so all these things is going to help in reducing the flood in the downstreams we are talking about the flood flood damage another way is how to reduce the flood so that uh, impact on the downstream and reduce damages to the cropping areas and population getting affected uh, if you see this in case of assam uh, we have seen that whoever is having an agriculture area uh, if they have a five acres suddenly the flood comes the whole land is again uh, 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 taken by a whole brahmaputra so there will not be any land only water is there so there's somebody having a land so they will be also without uh, land after because of the floods so there's a lot of damages a lot of uh, affecting the people uh, due to the floods so uh, that's and then one more is the embankment breaching and then impact on the downstream so that is one more this thing is the whole area is it is required suppose uh, once we have a embankment breaching then they, 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 those things have to be arrested once again so that uh, for the next monsoon if it is not arrested again it is going to flood again yeah. so these studies are also taken up and then so that it helps uh, in uh, restoring the these embankments so this in summary geospatial technologies play important role in natural hazards or in all scenarios such as preparedness early warning uh, response situations the space technology and geospatial tools are effectively used synergy of the technology is very important uh, in near real time uh, studies so that's all i wanted to say thank you uh, 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 gautam and thanks to nidm for giving me the opportunity so if any questions are there i'll answer Sir, sir, still now there is no question, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. anything? Sir, yeah. sir uh, thank you for enlightening the session with your uh, vast experience, sir. And uh, thank you for emphasizing the significance of the Indian space technology and the uh, role of it in uh, disaster management. Uh, we are also happy to know that the development in satellite sensors is recent in recent times and uh, their applications during the disaster times. Thank you for explanation about the flood early warning system work carried out by the uh, Assam Space Application Center and the other agencies, and which shows the successfulness of the interagency collaborations. Sir, 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 what is one more question from Dr. Damodar Panda? Yeah, please. Flood is a chronic problem in Assam. What is real solution? So that is what uh, I lastly presented how to reduce the flood impact. So that is the best uh, possible option, but how far we will be able to succeed, it all depends. Even uh, uh, if you if you talk about in Assam only, I told now, but if you talk about upstream in Arunachal Pradesh and other things, if you take a total catchment, in the total catchment is in India is only 40%. Around 60% is in China is in uh, Bhutan. Uh, anything uh, happens on the upstream, in the downstream it is going to be very, very, very devastating uh, role. And the main thing is, even if we talk about Arunachal, which is part of India, so there even also you construct uh, the reservoir and then uh, regulate the water. So flood impact on the downstream can also be reduced. If you take all these synergistic steps, so hopefully that then flood impact can be effectively reduced on the downstream. Yes. Sir, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Yeah, thank you, Gautam. Sure. Uh, with this, uh, we conclude the first session. Moving to the next session, we have joined with our second speaker, Dr. Byron from uh, 
Assam State Development Authority. She is working there from last two decades and his major activities include application of geospatial technology in a context of a DM and framing the policies. He also looking after the early warning systems and in integrations with the special technology. Sir? I can leave now. Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gautam. Uh, sir, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, thank you, NIDM, for giving me an opportunity to uh, speak in this platform. Uh, sir. So, uh, yeah. So we are able yeah. to share, uh, see your screen. Sir. Yeah, I, I'm sharing. I'm sharing the screen. Uh, is it visible? Sir, I was explaining is visible, sir. Okay, it's visible? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, thank you once again uh, for giving sir. me this opportunity to speak uh, in this forum. Uh, I am uh, Biren uh, Bashir. I'm working as a GIS expert in the state disaster management already for the last 10 years. In fact, I have been working in this field for the past 18 years uh not only in assam but of course i was in meghalaya also working uh in different projects uh so uh, uh, i'll be talking on the applications that um uh, that we have carried out using the geospatial technology in uh, uh in the context of disaster management only so uh, let me start my presentation with um, um with the preparation of the flood hazard atlas for assam uh, you all are aware of the flood situation in our state. Every year, we uh, flood is a chronic problem in our state, and every year we face problems, um, lots of damages due to the floods. Um, but uh, unfortunately, uh, till 2010, sir? They, yeah, sir, I apologize for disturbing you, but uh, we are unable to see your PPT. Can you share your PPT, sir? Okay, I have shared it. In fact, let me try it out again in case. I'll just stop sharing it and again I'll try it out. Just one second. Just one second. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Oh, we got goal. Hey, oh, we did good goal.
sir are you facing uh, any problem regarding sharing your ppt yeah we have not uh, i am not getting any windows in fact i am seeing your window only i am unable to share it from here okay uh, so before uh, sharing a content sir you should just open your ppt in your desktop yeah my ppt is open that is open okay, right then yeah. uh, uh, i think there is a uh, three option mute start window and share options so just click on that sharing content sir sir are you able to see the sharing uh, content one second yeah yes, i'm sir. trying again the mute yeah i'm trying that one and the moment i mm -hmm. want to share the content i'm yes, getting sir. here uh, let me try this one option yeah i think now it's visible just make it full screen sir yeah it's coming now yes sir yes sir okay okay it's good sir thank you very much sir thank you yeah uh, i was talking about the flood hazard atlas uh, uh, some has been suffering from flood for the last uh, so many years but uh, in spite of the flood uh, problem in the state, uh, unfortunately, there were no specific documents on the flood mandated areas uh, that we could have used it for any kind of planning and developmental activities. So till 2010, no such uh, documents were available. So uh, our um, authority was set up in 2010 and immediately you know, we approached a National Remote Sensing Center, Hyderabad, and requested them whether a flood hazard atlas can be prepared for the entire state. And uh, they agreed to our request. And in 2011, we came up uh, with the first flood hazard atlas uh, for the state, wherein uh, the flood inundated villages were classified into five different categories. That is very low, low, moderate, high, and very high, based on the uh, frequency of inundation. Uh, now the thing is that uh, the flood hazard atlas was uh, prepared it was a bit bulky also and initially it was difficult for the administrators to utilize it how do they utilize this flood hazard atlas it was uh, it was uh, entirely a new uh, document for them so we simplified the uh, flood hazard atlas into district wise brochures showing the revenue circle wise list of flood inundated villages because uh, that component was missing in the flood hazard atlas unless and until uh, uh, the um, we we uh, the, the administration understands which revenue circle is uh, affected and the villages uh, it, it it becomes an incomplete document so that was again modified uh, at asdama and then we using the basic uh, uh, gis layers available with us and then we prepared the um, uh, district wise brochures of the flood hazard atlas Apart from that, we also gave uh, various suggestive applications, how to utilize the flood hazard atlas to the district administration and other departments. And uh, in turn, um, the flood hazard atlas uh, really helped the government uh, in carrying out uh, different comprehensive plans in uh, both short and long term measures. Uh, recently, we had a project under the, we have uh, got a project under the World Bank. So based on the uh, flood hazard atlas only, we have identified 100, uh, uh, villages and uh, we are you know, working on these 100 villages um, um, based on the data from the flood hazard atlas only so the flood hazard atlas was updated in the year 2016 2016 and uh, now it's almost uh, it's uh, time for us to again update it uh, that in 2016 it was updated with 18 years of satellite data now i think uh, we should include the other satellite data and then we should come up with a fresh uh, uh, flood hazard atlas so uh, second application that we have used is the, the mapping of open spaces in guwahati actually this um, uh, application we carried out uh, from the perspective of the uh, nepal earthquake nepal earthquake uh, so um, there also the main issue was the uh, in case of a major disaster whether we do have sufficient open spaces uh, which could be used uh, for carrying out various, uh, uh, which can be used for shelter areas uh, during any emergencies. So we we uh, carried on a pilot basis for Guwahati city for 31 wards. 
and uh, and then we we in uh, and we observe that uh, in fact there is uh, very less open space within the city area and this one we presented uh, before uh, honorable minister also and he liked the idea then uh, he said that why don't you replicate it for the entire state so we carried out for the uh, at the time we were 27 districts and we carried out for all the major um, cities and towns uh, across the state with the help of uh, some remote sensing application center and then uh, these were all and these maps were all provided to the uh, to the district administration also so that they can carry out the planning activities in advance so that in case there is some uh, in case there is a disaster which strikes suddenly then they can at least identify uh, uh, carry out the shelter places uh, in these identified locations so uh, that was a significant um, activity that we carried out using the geospatial technology and uh, recently uh, our honorable cm has already given a direction that we should try to keep as much open space as possible by shifting the offices to another uh, areas so this is where the honorable cm has also given um, emphasis on now uh, the third application um, that we carried out was the uh, mapping of uh, the all the critical utilities and infrastructures for the entire state so we took this initiative um, and then mapped uh, almost 18,000 utilities um, across the state, the police stations, the fire service stations, uh, the schools which can be used as relief shelters, then uh, race platforms where we can keep the people, then vet veterinary hospitals, be the, uh, vital installations. Likewise, uh, all, all together, almost 32 utilities we identified and then we uh, mapped all these uh, utilities in the platform in the GIS platform. Now, the uh, we mapped the utilities and we kept it within ourselves because, uh, uh, as a result of which, uh, the uh, other district administration and districts they were unable to utilize it. So then we thought that uh, of um, developing a web geo portal, wherein the other districts also can um, view the data and then take uh, uh, carry out certain small small queries. For example, if there is a disaster uh, that happens in a particular location, then within a buffer of uh, uh, one kilometer, which are the nearest hospitals that are available and what will be the shortest route. So this kind of um, uh, special query also we have uh, incorporated in the uh, geo portal and it really helped um, um, the administration um, uh, for taking uh, decisions. It is a very simple user-friendly portal that we have developed. We didn't want to uh, make it more critical because we understand the uh, in uh, in uh, in the administration um, it becomes difficult for them if we make it more complicated. So we uh, kept in a very simple manner. Apart from that, under this web geo portal only, we uh, developed the incident reporting app also, and uh, wherein uh, we have uh, access to the up to the uh, revenue circle level. We have got field officers. So we have given this um, app to all the field officers. Whenever there is an uh, incident uh, uh, at, the, uh, at the village level, they try to go uh, collect the information from there itself and then send it. And that gets uh, uploaded in the portal. And here, from here, we try to visualize the information and try to take uh, decisions from um, the state level. So. We carried out another study, uh, hazard risk and vulnerability assessment uh, in collaboration with Northeastern Space Application Center for Guwahati, Silchar, Dibrigar, and for Dhamaji at a very uh, large scale. Uh, this technical report um, was again um, provided to uh, Guwahati Municipal Corporation and other um, jurisdictional areas uh, for carrying out uh, their planning activities. Uh, the flood early warning system already Raju sir has uh, already talked about. So uh, it was a very good initiative uh, which uh, we started during the year 2010 only because flood is one of the major problem in the state. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, uh, we didn't have any early warning mechanisms. 
what we have was the you know, Central Water Commission, which provides us the uh, uh, rise or fall in the water level. But that doesn't give us an idea uh, in which locally the flood is going to happen. So we needed more of a location specific flood early warning system rather than um, the rise or fall in the water level. So we communicate, we discussed with NISAC and we and finally the flood early warning system was developed, which gives us a warning on floods in magnitude, location, and probable time. So this is the system wherein the satellite data, ground information, and all the stakeholders are being brought under a common platform. And uh, the SR has said the accuracy is uh, around 75 to 80%. There are limitations because um, they collect the field information, then run the model, as well as they collect the uh, satellite information also. And uh, if they come up with a very high details, then they issue an alert. And uh, the alert is also issued in the form of a low, moderate, and high. So in case of, um, along with a map, showing which revenue circle is going to be inundated by which river. So up to that level, but of course we have not been able to uh, go up to the village level. As of now, we are confined within the uh, river and uh, the revenue circle, since we don't have a very high resolution uh, digital elevation model with us. So that has been confined within that uh, locality. And uh, under this project only, the embankment, the post flood embankment breaches are monitored. This information is really useful to us because after the flood scenario, um, whichever embankments uh, has been breached, the NESEC maps all those embankments and then they come up with a report. We present it to the before the chief secretary and uh, showing the status that these are the embankments which has been breached. And uh, we send a report to the water resource department also. And before the onset of monsoon, they again carry out the mapping part and they come up with the uh, another report setting the previous embankments, whether uh, the breach embankments has been plugged or not. So, so that also that report also we presented uh, before uh, the chief secretary, uh, setting that uh, so many embankments have already been plugged. However, few embankments are still left out and then water resource department um, has to explain why those uh, embankments were left out. So that um, uh, again, uh, the, those um, unplugged uh, embankments doesn't create any disaster in the field. That was the intention of this um, uh, embankment bridge monitoring. This is an example what uh, Raju sir had already shown. Yeah, this is another unique uh, work that uh, ASDM has done preparing the river atlas of Assam. We know that Assam has got uh, so many rivers, but all these rivers have not been mapped in a digital platform. So we wanted to map all the rivers, all the rivers across the state and the source of origin also, the source of origin, the length of the rivers, all these informations related to the rivers we wanted to map. And uh, this uh, project was uh, assigned to uh, Northeastern Space Application Center only with Water Resource Department being the nodal agency. Because someone has to own these projects on behalf of uh, on behalf of some uh, organization only, we need to carry out uh, these type of activities and someone has to own it once the if there is no ownership, the project doesn't uh, continue. So water resource department was kept the nodal agency and NISEC, they use very high resolution satellite data. They mapped out all the uh, rivers, whatever can be visible within uh, through one meter resolution data. And the maps were sent to the field for uh, field verification because the mapping component can be done from the uh, um, mapping component can be done using the satellite data, but the non spatial information, the, the names of the rivers, the activity information has to be collected from the field through the concerned agency only. 
So that component, um, that's why the, all these uh, maps were sent to the uh, field for verification. And once it comes back, those were plotted and a river atlas was developed. This is, in fact, um, uh, a very good information from this uh, atlas. We come to know which river is coming uh, from uh, whether the source of origin is Assam or it's um, Arunachal Pradesh or it is coming from China. So up to that level, uh, the river network has been uh, prepared. So uh, this example, I'm showing one district. The first map is showing uh, the names of all the rivers along with the embankment details, and then uh, the length of the embankments and um, river land. The second information uh, provides an information about the topographic condition of the uh, of the district. The third one gives an information about the land use uh, or land cover uh, within one kilometer area from uh, from the river network. And the fourth one, you can get the enter catchment, the statistics on the catchment. The catchment, the, the district is this one. See here, the district is uh, a small pod, but the major contribution of water is from Urnachal going down again, and it's coming from the China. So up to this level, the information has been mapped. And a portal has also been developed by NSEC. So these are the detailed views um, in the map uh, for the Kimfo district. We have um, the minor tributaries, the left and right banks, then railway lines. Of course, this needs to be updated uh, probably every two years or three years. That, that has not yet been decided. Uh, another activity that we took uh, only for the water resource department on a pilot basis was the embankment survey and monitoring using EUAVs. Uh, Assam has got around 423 embankments with a length of almost 4473 uh, kilometers. Basically, these embankments were constructed uh, to protect the flood inundated areas, and most of the embankments are very old. These were constructed a long time back and they have outlived, uh, in fact. Uh, so, in order to uh, identify the vulnerable sections of the embankment, Asdama, in whether UAVs can be utilized to identify the vulnerable sections of the embankments. Um, for that only, Asdama carried out a uh, study in collaboration with NISAC uh, for two sites, Ranganadi in Lakhimpur and Putimar in Kamrup, uh, covering a very small area, 35 square kilometer. And the study revealed that the UAVs can be used. The, the information actually, uh, the result uh, which came out from the study was uh, produced before the water resource department when water resource department uh, um, confirmed that the uavs can be used for ident and identifying the vulnerable sections as well as the health of the embankments so they are the technical organizations because based on their based on their in um, approval only we can judge whether the study was uh, okay or not so once they one uh, once they give that um, approval that yeah, the other UAVs can be used for identifying. So we have, we have requested them to carry, uh, to carry out the project, um, to expand the project uh, in different uh, areas also. And they're working on that activity now. Uh, a few activities that, uh, Apart from that, uh, we are also identifying and mapping of district wise flood vulnerable villages, which are under very high and high flood zones to take up preparedness schemes. And uh, it is our regular activity to map all the relief camps in advance before the onset, onset of monsoon. Identification on mapping of schools that lies on very high and high flood prone areas. Identification mapping of all the vulnerable landslide prone areas in Guwahati. So that, and these are also uh, uh, some using geospatial technology. We are uh, trying to uh, carry out these activities. And um, we have a state emergency operation center. Actually, the state emergency operation center uh, is um, collects the information from the field, then um, the storm report, the flood report. But uh, it is still working in a very conventional manner. 
So this state emergency operation center being the hub um, for all the emergency works. So we have upgraded it recently with various components. Uh, we have put in around 12 numbers of 14 inch video walls, workstations and laptops, high end workstations. I'm talking when we're talking about with the GIS facilities, then uh, 24 by 7 internet connectivities. Then uh, in SCOC, we definitely need a redundant, a redundant uh, power backup. So we do have that one. And we have got a VHF communication equipment along with a peer personal at the UOC. Now we are trying to, at the next level, we are trying to upgrade it further. Um, through a project called Web UOC. That concept actually, uh, during our exposure visit to uh, Andhra Pradesh, uh, we have uh, like a very good idea, concept that uh, it's an incident management system. Uh, so uh, we are trying to uh, replicate similar kind of uh, Web UOC in the uh, SEOC. Apart from that, uh, we do have a lightning early warning system uh, implemented in our state. Uh, we have hired the services of Earth Network, that is a US based agency, uh, which detects them. Uh, they have installed around uh, six sensors in uh, across the state, and they give us the uh, proximity alert of lightning and severe thunderstorm almost around 45 minutes in advance. So these are location specific information which we uh, receive at the SCOC. Uh, they have developed a dashboard for us. and. Um, now uh, it now what we have done in that we have customized that uh, dashboard with our available G, uh, gis database we have overlaid the state boundary the district boundary the revenue circle boundary and even the village boundary so being the location uh, since we can visualize those location specific information on the light mix right so we just see which villages are going to be affected and the, the uh, state emergency operation center, the, uh, the people who are in the state uh, emergency operation, they, they try to reach the uh, Gaumura uh, over phone or through WhatsApp also. And then they inform in advance that the, you're in your locality, lightning strikes are uh, going to happen. So be prepared. This is one step which is done by the SEOC. And since the uh, lightning strike, uh, the lightning early warning system, it um, provides the information only 45 minutes in advance. So we have linked our SMS API with the lightning, uh, with the, uh, with, with the dashboard. And immediately, whenever there's a lightning strike, we have fixed a radius of five kilometers or 10 kilometers. Within that uh, locality, we are not being able to send to the last mile, but we are sending it up to the revenue circle right now. We are sending, uh, this in um, uh, whatever alerts are generated, these alerts are being disseminated directly through the API to the revenue circle officer and our field officers. Plus, we have collected the list of almost 18,000 volunteers, uh, and we are trying to disseminate it to these 18,000 volunteers also at the same time. So, the dissemination process takes hardly uh, three to four minutes, in fact. But but we have not been able to reach up to the uh, last mile actually that is what we are working on and we are trying to implement the cell broadcasting technology or uh, sms location based sms system uh, through which we hope that we'll um, go further down and then uh, and disseminate this information uh, to save the lives of the people So this is a view of the SCOC. It's all, uh, it's of course not a big SCOC and uh, we are having, uh, um, our building is coming up uh, in that we'll be having a bigger SCOC. This is equipped with all these VHF sets that the GIS uh, infrastructure. So, and we are implementing other, um, uh, we are trying to implementing, uh, implement this uh, automated early warning dissemination system also probably this year only and uh, here i'll be showing you a few maps uh, depicting the activities of asdam actually uh, this is a map showing the flood vulnerable revenue circles of assam we have been collecting the information of uh, on flood for the last uh, from 2011 onwards and then we have identified the most vulnerable flood 
revenue circles also. Now, generating the map and converting it into an actionable product is very much essential. So now, since we have identified the uh, flood vulnerable circles, so here we try to um, uh, here, in fact, we give them um, this revenue as topmost priority, and then um, we we try to um, keep the uh, SDRF and NDRF uh, somewhere nearby in those areas only. So this is a map showing the uh, villages on the high and very high flood zones under different revenue, revenue circles. We are preparing maps of the uh, storm vulnerable revenue circles also. At least uh, based on the database, now we can uh, we have identified the most vulnerable storm revenue circles also. Uh, this is a map um, which uh, shows the the most vulnerable lightning uh, showing the lightning strikes in Assam. So this is based on only three years data because. Uh, we have implemented this lightning uh, warning system uh, from 2020, but with, uh, based on the request, they have provided us the data of 2019 also. So 19 to 21, we want, we tried to identify the uh, vulnerable districts, which um, where lightning strikes are maximum. And uh, we have observed that uh, the red ones are the, uh, the most vulnerable uh, districts where maximum lightning strikes have been observed. In fact, these are the districts where the death has also uh, been occurring in, in quite a large number. So similar map showing storms or lightning deaths across different revenue cycles of Assam. We also try to map the schools which gets washed away due to floods. So any kind of activity, or any kind of damage uh, which occurs in the field, we try to uh, we try to we try to map it, and then we try to identify the gaps also, and uh, try to take action on those uh, gaps. So this is a map uh, which we have prepared for the in, uh, for our own purpose. Uh, it's a map showing uh, Assam and the neighboring states, including Bhutan, along with the uh, river network also. So this uh, map, uh, it, uh, it helps us uh, very, uh, very much, in fact, significantly uh, in, uh, in taking decisions in certain, uh, in, uh, taking certain kinds of decisions, like if there is very high heavy rainfall in the upper catchment, in, and which district in which district there is a uh, heavy rainfall based on that which district in the lower Assam, uh, in Assam part uh, is going to be affected uh, we can just make some guess from uh, based on this map so this is a very useful map for us that's how we are working on that of course the uh, we do have the flood early warning system and the central water commission uh, information available with us then IMD focused also but this map uh, really helps us in planning active in planning purpose. We get we get a rough idea where uh, if if at the higher level, for example, in Arunachal Pradesh in a particular district, heavy rainfall is occurring, then which district might uh, in Assam might be uh, affected. So the that is all from my side. The application component. And uh, we are um, we are working uh, on other components like uh, what I have already told uh, development of a web EOC, and then uh, uh, trying to uh, implement uh, automated early warning dissemination system. This is the place where we are lagging behind. We have got lots of uh, early warning systems, but unless and until we are being able to disseminate it to the last mile. Uh, that technology is of no use. So we are uh, working hard on that component also. And yeah, on the GIS part, of course, in every EOC, I think uh, there should be a GIS. Uh, uh, there should be a GIS lab, and the web EOC will be integrated uh, uh, with the GIS uh, lab for carrying out uh, lots of decisions and for visualization aspects also. And uh, apart from that, we are also trying to install some uh, uh, siren systems also uh, in those areas where uh, uh, 
where um, the dams are being uh, dams are releasing water and um, we are working on a flood uh, simulation model with NISAC. And uh, if we get the ditches and based on the ditches, how much area is going to be uh, inundated, uh, if we know those areas, we can at least, uh, with the help of the siren system, uh, we, can, we can try to reach the people. So uh, that si the siren system can be triggered from the SCOC itself. So we are working on that technology also now. Yeah, the, the role of GS was a very important role in these aspects because if we have the base layers, then only we'll be able to identify it. It means which areas will be affected. So uh, this is all in short what we have developed. And uh, if any questions are there, I, I would like to attend that. Thank you, Gautam. I'm short in fact because we have got another meeting uh, with the World Bank today. Yes. So, Sir, uh, thank you for your time. Sir, we have uh, one question from uh, Dr. Damodar Pandey. Yeah. Uh, so the question is like, have you mapped the number of houses damaged and crop loss? If yes, which images are used for flood damage assessment? No, no, we have not mapped the uh, houses damages, damage and the crop loss. Yes, crop loss is being ma uh, mapped by NSEC uh, based on the uh, satellite data. Uh, it's the rather satellite, uh, basically they, uh, we get the information from NRSC, Hyderabad. NRSC provides us the uh, process data to uh, us and that data is being provided to NISEC also and NISEC maps out all the uh, damage estimate. They come up with a big report, but houses damage, of course, no, we have not mapped. So that's only the question. We need the satellite data, uh, Sentinel data only plus the radar data. Sentinel data, which is freely available, but the processing part is being done by NRSC. Out here, we do not do that to that extent. We so, take the help of knowledge institutes. Sir, we have only this question in the chat box still now. Yes. So, sir, uh, thank you for thank you, sir, for explaining the role of uh, emergency operations center of uh, some state disaster authority, and it functions in tackling uh, the various hazards, especially lightning in timely manner and also forecast and monitoring system of SEOC, and especially, sir, how EOC is facilitating uh, administrative history for pre and post disaster incident analysis for a better response and recovery. And we are also very appreciate the efforts made by the Assam State Disaster Authority for preparing the web geo portal for decision making, sir, and the flows models. Thank you for highlighting the multi other assessment of uh, Assam State. And uh, thank you for taking the time to join us today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gautam. And thank you, NIDM, for giving me, uh, once again, I'm thankful to you for giving me the opportunity to speak in this platform. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, with the end of the session, we will move to validity session of the webinar. So, Dr. Haldar, sir. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, sir, both of you. Please, uh, yes, I'd like to invite you to uh, for the validity session, sir. So, uh, <clears throat> a details discussion was given for the uh, especially for flood disaster. And they have given the what is the status of uh, Assam, and Dr. Raju he told a lot about the different kinds of satellite and how they are managing in the present scenario and the hazards, and that uh, the present scenario in Assam what is going on and the hazard map is talked by uh, Dr. Vaishya. Obviously, it is very nice that he has given the up to date status, a very nice nicely elaborated, and it is useful for the participant also. And this geospatial technology really is having a lot of capability to know the uh, present scenario of all kinds of hazards and especially for the disasters. It may be man-made or it may be uh, natural. So with this, I want to stop here. Now I wish good luck that participant, they should be used the, this present knowledge for their endeavor and for the benefit. And definitely some kind of uh, some sorts of disasters they have uh, mentioned then definitely it will be helpful indirectly for the preparedness mitigation other purposes so the and that will be also benefited for the participants so okay mr gautam now i also th put my thanks to the both the learned speaker so they have given the ample knowledge 
they have shared their present uh, working uh, knowledge of the Assam state and surrounding. Okay, I'm sure. thankful. I put my thanks to them. Okay, over to sure. you, Dr. Gautam. Sure. Thank you, sir, for enlightening the session with your experience. And uh, I wanted to convey my intensive thanks to Sri Tajas and IPSVD, NIDM, and uh, Professor Surya Prakash, sir, at the Division and CBR Industrial and Cyber DR Division, National Institute of Disaster Management, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Government of India. And uh, I'd like to thank all the research persons and uh, panelists and administrators for attending this call, webinar. And my heartfelt thanks to IT session of NIDM for uh, working behind the curtains. And uh, uh, thank you all of you for taking the time to join us today. Have a great day. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.